pretty uh, uh, streamlined, streamlined order of, uh, for the events. So uh, the graduation ceremony will begin with a screening of student work. And so then, uh, which, uh, which, is about, uh, which is about an hour. And after that, we'll take, take a little bit of a break and then, uh, and then reassess the next steps. We, had, uh, uh, we never know how much material we're going to get from the student screening. And so when we did the scheduling, we scheduled two hours. And it could be uh, that our commencement speaker uh, might have been told to come after the screening. And so if it's an hour shorter, but we'll deal with that later. We'll just we'll deal with we'll deal with that on the we'll deal with that on the on the fly. <laughs> uh, but in any case, the uh, we'll, we'll, uh, the unfolding of events will be the screening, and then uh, uh, I have a I have a are you surprised? I have a few I'll have a few remarks for the class, and we have and then we'll uh, we have uh, an uh, Robert Shulman Award winner speaking, our commencement speaker, and then. Uh, uh, and then the uh, dispensation of the credentials and degrees, which we're all all here. So, but without further ado, we'll um, we'll begin with the uh, we'll begin with the screening. Thank you.
thinking about some of the things that I wanted to say to this class, I was really, I was, I was really alternating between almost ignoring it <laughs> and pretending, oh, here we are, it's just like a graduating class like any other, and in a certain sense that's true. As you can see from the work that we, uh, that we saw on the screen and everything, um, in terms of the outcomes of the students' education and what they've learned, uh, I, I genuinely believe that if somebody were to be sitting here at this graduation and looking at the work or sitting at a graduate a, a year ago or two years ago or three years ago or four years ago, they, they wouldn't say, oh my gosh, this, this is really, this is the group of work that was produced by the students that had to go through a pandemic. Uh, we had a graduate presentation yesterday of the graduate students' final projects and uh, I was talking to some of our faculty about exactly this idea that if somebody had come in and listened to presentations, yeah, it would have been seamless in, in, that, in that sense. It was not like, oh my gosh, a highlighter that said, oh my gosh, these, these students have completed their education in the pandemic, and let's, you know, let's give them a little, bit of a, a little bit of a free pass. Now that's very different than saying what they had to go through to get to that point. And that really is the reason why I do want to be explicit about, about talking about this. Uh, what, what the students have accomplished as they've gone through their education is not ordinary uh, at all. And uh, it has been uh, difficult, in a difficult and challenging period, I mean, both for them as individuals, I think, I think really for, as a, as a larger community, for all of us. I mean, there's just no, you know, there's just no denying that reality. Uh, but I think one, I don't know if it's a but or an end, but one thing about being at a film school that, uh, that is interesting is that really the skills and the ability that the students are using to complete their education really parallel a set of skills that they will have, they will actually have to have in their careers. You know, thinking on their feet, being resilient, adapting to situations that you have absolutely no control over. No, no control over at all. Just because you have no control over it doesn't mean that you don't have to deal with it in both a, in a professional environment. And for me, I really feel that with this group of students collectively, that they have uh, really put to work the tools that would normally take place after they graduate. So, you know, really, there's a set of skills that you learn during the program, and there is a, there obviously is a sequential quality to all of this. There's a set of skills that you learn, you graduate, you go on and develop your career, go into the real world, and you start developing and using that toolbox that you've learned. I think for this group of students, they were already using a toolbox in an accelerated way uh, that separates them from previous graduates of Seattle Film Institute. So that it really, well, this, I don't know if this is a comfort to, the, to, the, to those of you graduating today or not, but the reality is, uh, for, for better or for worse, you have, you have a bit of a head start uh, on some of, our, uh, you know, some of our previous graduates because you've already, I mean, you've already been using you know, those skill sets uh, in a way uh, just to just to finish just to complete your education. I mean, and, and not part of a professional or work environment. You're you're already you're already doing it. And I hope you know I hope as you go forward, uh, I hope as you go forward in your careers that uh, that accelerated quality to the start of your careers will in these initial this initial period uh, will really help you out. I mean, help you out in a number of different ways. Help you out in a practical sense because you do have things under your belt at an earlier stage, perhaps help you out uh, in, a, in a psychological sense, that you really do have, you know, you really do have some things that you've accomplished where, you know, okay, let's check some of this off the list, you know, take a deep breath, I know, I know I can, you know, I know I can do that. You really, you really have. But what I also, what I also want to remind you of, I think, is that while it is very true that, what, that while you've been at Seattle Film Institute, you've developed a toolbox, a set of skills and experiences that really are designed to propel you into the next stages of your development. And that toolbox will, in one form or another, be with you really for, and, you know, really for the rest of, 
for the rest of your life. You know, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just there. The way that you use that toolbox, the contents of that toolbox is, is, is going to, of course, change over time. There'll be tools that you add to it that don't even exist right now. There are tools in there that you know, will be sort of tucked away that you almost forget that you have them and you'll stumble on a situation and you'll say, wow, I can do this. I haven't done this in a really long time and here it is. So you will, you will be carrying this in a practical sense. You'll be carrying this toolbox in a way that's almost, there'll be so, so much second nature that you almost forget that it's there as, as an it. That being said, I think what I want to, you know, I guess this is my parental voice, and at graduation I get to be parental, I have to say, it just brings it out of me, and there's something about this situation. But the, the parental voice in me wants to remind you of that, uh, that though you're, you're really stepping into, stepping into an opportunity where you know, you, you really have the keys to the car. You're the driver. You're, you're beginning to take control in a very practical way over, over your career. And that, that is very true. I mean, you know, you are, you are the one, you are the one that's in charge. However, uh, you are not alone. And I think this is sort of what I want to uh, Im impress on you. That even though uh, you are going to be taking these next steps, you know, developing your careers, um, you're not, you're not, you're, you're just not there by yourself. So while you've been in school, obviously, you know, you've learned, you've learned and developed the, you know, that really collaborative side that's really at the heart of filmmaking. It's one of the things that separates our profession from, you know, you know, somebody majors in chemistry, well, they major I wish I could do that, but anyway, somebody majors in chemistry, they major in chemistry. But, there, but it's not necessary that they'll be collaborating with anybody. You have that really, that collaborative ability is really part of your, you know, really at this point I feel it's part of your DNA. It's almost hard, hardwired in that ability to work with other people on the set, co-write a script with somebody, have a partner for developing a project. All of that are skills that you've worked on and developed um, while you're in school. However, that collaborative sense, and I think this is, you know, what I'm trying to uh, really have resonate with you, is that collaborative sense doesn't just connect to, to working with other people uh, on projects. That really, it means that you, you need to remember that you are not alone, that you have the ability to call a friend or a mentor up, you know, even, even one of us at SFI, email us, really, if you feel, if you feel comfortable doing that, you know, that, uh, that, you know, that word of support or that brainstorming doesn't have to be a big thing to be incredibly important. And I think for me, I mean, on a very, very personal level, the pandemic has sort of created what's almost a parallel universe, where you have, you know, where you, where you as a group have that resilience to, uh, to accomplish what you've accomplished. Uh, and there's been absolutely, you know, uh, a side, of, more than a side of this, that is very, very isolating. Having to take classes by Zoom, not, you know, not on ground in class with people. I mean, it's without a doubt, you know, created for, for a profession that's really hands-on. You've gone through parts of your education in a really very non uh, traditional way, which has the capacity from the outside to seem to be more isolating. And what I want to remind you is that I think it should, it should almost be just the opposite, that your ability to do this is a reminder that you, you should reach out, call that just, you know, checking in with somebody, that pat on the back, if, if you're getting discouraged, being able to talk to, being able to talk to somebody, that's part of being collaborative. And it's not, it's not like this big tool. It's not like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, you know how do I use Adobe Premiere? You know, uh, you know, what, you know, what's the difference between uh, you know, the circle of confusion and depth of field? Uh, what is the difference between the circle of confusion and depth of field? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> these are, uh, <laughs> you know, these are, you know, that ability to reach out and be connected with other people, I think, is something uh, that I just really want you to keep in mind as you, uh, as you uh, as you enter your next step, so really, uh, my words. I always try to, you know, you know, have you know some final words for the graduating class. And my words today are simply, 
you are not alone. You are not alone. So. <laughs> So now, now it, it, it's, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, the uh, recipient of the Robert Shulman Award. Uh, and this is, uh, this is an award. The nice thing about, about uh, founding, founding a film school, one of the nice, one of the nice perks is uh, that I have, I, have, we had, I had the ability to create an award <laughs> uh, in honor of my father, which is something that and my, uh, my father spent his basically his entire career uh, teaching American literature at the University of Washington, and he was just this incredible. Uh, he was just this incredible teacher, and he was uh, he was a bit of an outlier. He did not he did not fit into uh, he did not fit into what I would say the normal organizational structure. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Matter of fact, maybe my relationship to authority was a little bit inherited. <laughs> Let's just say that. But in any case, he just. He just had a real appreciation, uh, a real appreciation, appreciation for students that were, you know, sort of tenacious, spunky, you know, that you know, you know, that really had, to, of course, had the ability to do the work because he himself was very rigorous, both as a teacher and in terms of his scholarship. But he just had a real appreciation for students, you know. The, I mean, the word that keeps on coming to mind for me is sort of uh, a combination of spunky and tenacious. He just, he just. Uh, he just loved that, and so uh, uh, when this award was created, in addition, in addition to the academic uh, side of you know recognizing somebody's uh, you know the work that somebody has done during the program, uh, when we uh, when we look at the uh, the list of candidates, and often it makes the process of deciding very very difficult because I think. I think by its very nature, a film school like ours just attracts people who are already spunky. So in a way, so many of our students have the qualities that this award honors. But that's not meant to take anything away uh, from this year's recipient, uh, Can Candace Clark. And I, I've been I was working very hard on, on, on my introduction for her uh, because uh, she's been working on these, uh, well, you can see, uh, uh, suddenly closer was uh, an example of her work that we that was screened uh, today, and so that sort of uh, you know uh, that sort of soap opera quality, or uh, 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 I felt like I felt like I was just handed this opportunity, like to do this incredible introduction where I could just do something with that, uh, you know, with that with that metaphor, and and after a point, I just realized. I just, I just, I just couldn't take advantage of it. There was, I knew, I knew there was, I knew there was a through line to, to connecting the work that Candace has done uh, with the program to introducing her. But I just, I'm, I'm going to save it for the writers' room, and I just like to uh, uh, have Candace Carr come up and say a few words to, to all of us today. an honor and I greatly appreciate it and I can't believe like we are actually graduating um, I know I got a few gray hairs through this process so that was fun um, but I just want to say we should all be very proud of ourselves I know our families friends and the faculty are and also you know it's not just going as um, David had said it's not just going to film school we accomplished but like persevering through the pandemic um, I know we have a couple graduates who are actually going to school before that occurred and I'm stuck with it. So I really want to give you guys a special shout out because that's really admirable and thank you very much. So please know pats on your back for that. Really awesome. Um, very impressive. But um, <laughs> I just wanted to say that with that learned, we really gathered a perseverance to get through this, pro this program during this time. And that's really what we're going to need to like get through this industry. And with that, like, we're a team and we can all be there for like our fellow filmmakers 
and as we navigate our next steps. And I just want to say thank you again very, very much. And hey, we did it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
their time at SFI is lurking in the back of their mind but starting to make its journey to the front of their mind. And that question, uh, appropriately enough, is what the hell do I do now? Um, and so ideally, in a perfect world, we could have a, a graduation speaker who can not only speak to that question intelligently, but really, more importantly, embody an answer. Um, and so I'm happy to report that at least for this particular moment in time, we do inhabit a perfect world. Uh, S.J. Chiro is best known for her two feature films, Lane 1974 and East of the Mountains. Uh, Lane, and if you have to forgive me, I was struggling to find a parking spot. I left my notes in the car, but hey, <laughs> I, if I don't know something, I'll make it up and now she will correct me if she gets up here. Uh, Lane 1974 was, direct, uh, was directed in uh, 2017. It made its debut at the South by Southwest Festival to great acclaim. It won a grand jury prize at the Seattle International Film Festival. Uh, it went on to win several awards at, in, at uh, both U.S. and <clears throat> international festivals. Um, was picked up for distribution by The Orchard, which at that time was a kind of a boutique subsidiary of Sony Entertainment. Uh, it's now actually, it goes by the name Studio 1091, and it's, uh, it's still a boutique shop, but it's uh, very respected, very successful uh, film production and film distribution company. Um, and uh, more recently, SJ directed East of the Mountains, starring, starring uh, Tom Skerritt and Mira Servino. Uh, Servino. Um, it made a, a incredibly successful uh, debut at the Seattle International Film Festival. It was picked up, if not immediately, very soon by Quiver Distribution, and I would commend it to all of you. It's, it's shot entirely in Washington State. It's got 99% cast and crews from Washington. Um, SG describes it as a love letter to the state of Washington, uh, and it really features, uh, I think, Tom Skerritt's best performance. It's just, it's, it's a really, it's a beautiful film, and it, uh, unless something's changed in the last six weeks, it is still available on HBO to watch on HBO and HBO Max, so I would encourage all of you to watch it. Uh, and in addition to, uh, in addition to those feature films, SJ has done a number of award-winning short films. Uh, and she is a visiting professor at Cornish College of the Arts and a director, uh, member of the Directors Guild of America. And most pertinently to all of our graduating, graduating students, she built this very impressive list of accomplishments living in Seattle. So um, let's get right to it. It is. Uh, my distinct honor and sincere pleasure to welcome and introduce S.J. Shiro. Thank you so much. How are you all doing? It's getting to the end of this wonderful day, isn't it? You all right? Okay, good. Welcome, families, friends, esteemed faculty and administrators, and above all, welcome graduates. Today is the day we celebrate you, your education, your past projects and wonderful achievements while at school, and today is also the day that we welcome you no longer as students, but as film professionals. I know that there might be a, more than a little anxiety about finding employment in this weird and sometimes wonderful industry, but let's not obsess on that right now. <laughs> this industry is notoriously mercurial. As the axiom goes, nobody knows anything. This is why I want to caution you against trying to assess what you think the industry wants, and then forcing your work into that shape. Things are constantly in flux in this industry, constantly changing. Things you have no control over. So what can you do? I want to remind you that you are very important. Who you are is very important. What you think is important. What you value is extremely important. 
And where your heart is, is important. The way you treat people is important. And the work you make is extremely, extremely important and will reflect all of these things. Every film is a political film. Jane Schoenenberg in Filmmaker Magazine wrote in 2016, every film represents a set of values and broadcasts these values out into society. She continues, I'm not just talking about storylines or morals or messages, no. When you're making a film, every creative and business decision is political. As an artist, there is so much you need to be aware of and sensitive to. Your work is going out into the world and your work will affect the world. You have chosen to dedicate your life to one of the most powerful forms of communication there is. And it's important to acknowledge this and respect it. But what about getting hired? What about making a living? How am I going to pay my student loans? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Take a deep breath. This industry is known for working people up into a bundle of anxiety. Quelling this anxiety is going to be a big part of your work as a film artist. It's going to be critical for you to learn how to regulate stress in your body since this can be such a stressful work environment. There are going to be so many moments of extreme pressure and stress in your, your filmmaking career. Your collaborators might lose control and lash out on the set. You can lose important locations at the last minute. Things beyond your control can and will collapse. I'm sure you've already experienced some of this in your student work. It's going to happen. I'm going to take a moment and teach you something right now. And parents, friends, family, join in this exercise. Okay, before starting this exercise, uncross your arms, uncross your legs. Now pay attention to your breathing. Slow, deep, long breaths can help you maintain a sense of calm or help you to return to a calmer state. Once you find your breath, go through the following steps to help ground yourself. Five, acknowledge five things you can see around you. Take the time. Five things. Four, acknowledge four things that you can touch you don't have to touch them, but that you could touch. Okay. Three. Three things that you hear. <laughs> you all heard that one. Two. Acknowledge two things that you can smell. Maybe you can smell somebody's cologne or soap or deodorant. Or maybe somebody got flowers today. And one, acknowledge one thing you can taste. What does the inside of your mouth taste like? Is it gum, coffee, or maybe you've already had lunch? This exercise is meant to ground you in the present when your mind feels overwhelmed with anxious thoughts. I hope you will remember this exercise. I guarantee you, you will come upon occasion to use it. In the middle of shooting my first feature film, as Chris was talking about, late 1974, we had an investor pull out. This was a catastrophe, as we had already borrowed and spent the money. I cried in a bar that night while my producer tried to comfort me. And I wish I had known that exercise then would have been helpful. But what I did know is that I had to find a way 
to be resilient. <coughs> Crying is okay for a few minutes in private. Sure, you're human. But we knew we would have to get creative and forge a strategy that would allow us to continue to finish filming the film. You're going to take some difficult blows. But remember, you're a fighter and you're a leader. If you've trained in martial arts, as I have, you may remember this maxim. Seven times down, eight times up. Perseverance is key. Filmmaking is not a solitary activity. You are going to need collaborators. You might have already found some of your most pro profound collaborators. They might be sitting in this room right now. When Barry Jenkins made the Academy Award winning film Moonlight, both his cinematographer and his producer were longtime friends and collaborators from film school. Spike Lee met Ernest Dickerson at NYU. They went on to work together on such films as She's Gotta Have It, School Days, Do the Right Thing, Jungle Fever, and Malcolm X, until Ernest Dickerson uh, went on to his own directing career. But you will also need to meet new people to collaborate with. How do you do this? When I wanted to make my first short film, I was very specific about the kind of cinematographer I wanted to work with. I reached out to Dave Hannigan, who worked at the Northwest Film Forum at that time, and asked him if he knew any cinematographers with the special qualifications I was looking for. He connected me with Danielle Morgan, a filmmaker in her own right, who turned out to be a perfect collaborator for this short film. We are lucky to live in a place with so many resources for filmmakers. Do not be shy about taking advantage of these resources. And don't be shy to reach out and ask for help. Work on other people's films. Megan Griffiths was an AD on many films before she launched her directing career. Lynn Shelton volunteered to be the set photographer on Craig Johnson's film, True Adolescence, which was shot here in the Pacific Northwest. And it was on this film that she met Mark Duplass, who would go on to be one of her most important collaborators as far as, far as propelling her career forward in the business. Come to work on other people's films joyfully and with an open heart. You will learn and you will make connections, and they will come on and work on your films with joy and an open heart. This is absolutely invaluable. I want to go back to that five exercise for a moment. I like this exercise because it centers the senses. As filmmakers, I want you to hone your senses. Pay attention to how something smells what kind of reaction your skin gives when you run your hand down a smooth wooden banister, for example. Color and color placement are integral to filmmaking. Pay attention. Pay attention to your senses and the feelings they evoke. Everyone needs to eat, but foods can evoke a different reaction for different characters. So pay attention. Keep your senses alive. Filmmaking is very physical work. Don't fall into the trap of living in your head and keeping everything intellectual. And finally, hone your sense of empathy. Roger Ebert famously referred to films as empathy machines. We are here to parse, to illuminate, and to be curious about humanity. To do this, you will need your empathy fully intact. You are important. Your empathy is important. Your humanity is important. Resilience, perseverance, emotional grounding, collaboration, staying alive in your body, and empathy with humanity, along with your vision, 
This is how you will get your stories told. This is how you will be able to affect the world. Robert Bresson said, make visible what without you might perhaps never have been seen. Congratulations to the class of 2022. You are the future and we cannot wait to see what you bring to the world. Thank you. Just a, a few housekeeping notes before we begin. Uh, we have a number. We have a number of different uh, uh, classes graduating, certificate programs, BA, master's programs. So I think what I'd like to do is we're going to uh, call people up by by by, by their credential uh, and have them. So when you're called up, stay you know, stay on stage. And some some of these programs only have a couple of people. Some of them have a lot. But uh, we'll do it by credential. St stay on stage when we, when we finished. When we finish the grouping for that credential, people can take pictures of the people in, in that group, and then um, and then you can go back and sit down. But then at the very end, I'd like to call back all of the graduates from all of them and just have everybody uh, as as a big group uh, as a big group on the stage. <laughs> so uh, so uh, so now here is my absolute yeah. What? yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, so you can see this one. We, we didn't have our rehearsal dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get past the pandemic. Uh, we're rusty on We're, we're on really break. rusty. <laughs> yeah. So Monique in there is, uh, is going to help me with the, uh, the degree folders. And um, she's, she's shy today, so she's not going to fill up any time here with a, another speech. Uh, but anyway, this is who Chris was talking speech. about. Help him get us <laughs> I'll talk to you after <laughs> <laughs> Through the pandemic, if we are through the pandemic. So, um, I'll give my two cents worth and I'll keep it really short, which is I hope you take the commencement speech to heart because what she's telling you is really, I think, one of the vast secrets of being successful in the industry. Um, you know, I've I love bookends, which is where you see the same thing at the beginning of the movie and the same thing at the end. One thing I tell every student coming in and going out is that I've seen a lot of talent go through in students in the school, and uh, it's not all about talent. It's about persistence and diligence and staying out there and never saying no. Uh, so talent is, you know, no degree that you will be successful. Uh, it's all about staying, staying out there and keeping at it. Uh, and the last piece of wisdom I usually give students is uh, don't think of this graduation ceremony as a, you know, a climax to what you've been doing, but as to the inciting incident of your next step and your next piece of the story. So we'll, we'll go ahead with the degrees and uh, I will uh, do the main calling and Monique's going to hand out the degree. So uh, this, is my, uh, this is what you have all been... Uh, all been waiting for, especially the students for how, all these many years. So, but now I get to actually do this. So, this is this is one of my absolute favorite parts of my job. 
where I get to say, I, David Shulman, founder and president of Seattle Film, Film Institute, by the authority of the state of Washington, confer the respective certificates to, and degrees <coughs> on the candidates of our class of 2022. Congratulations. All right. start with the uh, certificate in film, uh, in filmmaking concentration, and uh, the student who's here today is Thomas Swickley. Today. Uh, then we have the Bachelor of Arts in Film uh, in the Filmmaking Concentration. Uh, first is Brendan Garrison. Selassie. Jones.
it's one of the most expensive photos. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll do the master's programs. Well, he was a good conversation. Uh, we'll yeah. Master of Arts in Producing for Film. And the first one is Chad Anderson. Congratulations! Thank you. 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 Thank you
can't sneak up there and go out. Getting this. Oh,
Oh, yeah, yeah that's what it is. Okay. Red band. Mr. Red band. Oh, that's embarrassing. Red band. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm good. All right.